Take an equilateral triangle with sides equal to 2. The square of the height is equal to 3. Take a square of side lengths 2 and put a diagonal through. The other diagonal is split in half, and summing squares of these halves gives us 4. For a pentagon with two sides, draw one diagonal, which then splits the height in two parts. The sum of their squares is 5. Do you see a pattern here? The sums we get are always equal to the number of sides in our regular polygons. I discovered this wonderful fact in a Korean tweet, so thanks to this guy um, for, for giving me the idea. Anyway, the proof of this pattern is even more remarkable, and it actually borrows something from complex analysis. To define it more rigorously, we take any regular polygon and consider its aces of symmetry. Sometimes it's a height and sometimes it's a diagonal. We then divide it by all possible orthogonal chords of our polygon and the equality should follow. Let us begin by proving it for even-sided polygons. The only quantities we know are sides and angles and to make use of them, we should think about triangles. So, in each of these triangles, the hypotenuse is fixed at 2. And if we label the angles, our target sum boils down to a combination of squared signs. Now we conjecture that it works the same for the other vertical segments. Oh! But what happens here? These obtuse angles are not inside the triangles, but the yellow angles are. However, together they add up to 180, and we should remember this sign identity. So, using these obtuse angles is fine for our calculation. The polygon is regular, so it should not be hard to figure out these angles. The total of all internal angles is pi times n minus 2, so each internal angle is an nth part of that. The first alpha angle is then half of pi minus this, which is pi divided by n. Our polygon also has a rotational symmetry. Take the center and consider these wedges. Rotating by one of them returns the same polygon. So this rotation is exactly how much the next alpha angle in our sequence gains. It's not hard to make up a general formula. K runs between 0 and half and minus 2. Now the sum we want to calculate looks like this. And it's not exactly trivial. To succeed, we need to observe. Observe that we can as well consider horizontal lines of our triangles. They relate to cosines of the same angles. Let's sum the two series together. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, hence the sum simplifies and yields 2n. Now we discuss the most beautiful part of the proof. It so happens that our cosine series is equal to the sine series. In other words, I claim that cosine squared minus sine squared is 0. Here we can use yet another trig identity, namely a double angle formula. So we go from squared trig to just trig. Because the angles are doubled, they actually describe x coordinates of some polygon's vertices, a polygon which is inscribed inside a unit circle. If we add y coordinates, 
aka sines of the same angles, we discover roots of unity. It means that if we convert any of these points to complex numbers in a natural way, its nth power is going to be 1. Fun fact, the sum of all nth roots of unity is 0, because it is actually a geometric progression, where the term to the nth power is 1. Because it is 0, both the real and the complex components are 0, so sine and cosine series are both 0. That's a lot of work, but we're finally down to these two facts. Clearly, they imply the desired equality. The sum of squared vertical elements is always equal to n. As always, I give you a little homework. How would you prove this fact for polygons with an odd number of sides? Leave your thoughts in the comments.